experiencing chilly weather 25 kilometers from the CBD. Our journey today has led us to Nderi Town in Kiambu County, where we are going to meet a horticultural farmer with some interesting vegetables for us. This is Seeds of Gold. Let's meet the farmer. I'm Peter Kanye, yes. I'm 32 years old. I'm a landscape architect by profession. A landscape architect? Yes, trained in uh, design and installation of landscaping. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yep. Hence the, the reason why your farm looks like this. Yeah, with <laughs> my background training, uh -huh. I believe uh, plants to me is simple to manage. So yes. Plants yeah. is all you do? Yeah, landscaping deals with much more designing and defining where plants will go in people's homes. Okay. So now when it comes to planting of vegetables, mm -hmm. it's much more or less just replacing the flowers I do in landscaping mm -hmm. with the vegetables in the garden. So how did you get into, you know, vegetable farming? I began in a very simple manner. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife had gone for vegetable shopping. Mm -hmm. Then we bought a couple of plants. Mm -hmm. I began f just for, staple, for our consumption only. Mm -hmm. Then uh, little by little, I saw I have all these farm at my disposal. I bought another one. The next time we went for, the next time we went for shopping, mm -hmm. I started planting little by little. Mm -hmm. Then um, you can see where we are now. How how long ago mm -hmm. was this? How long ago did you start? I've been here for two years. Okay. So I can say it's been progressively, uh, slowly, slowly growing for two years. So. Primarily, what do you plant on, on your farm? I have skumawiki, mm -hmm. I have spinach, I have carrots, I have dania. Mm -hmm. I have greenhouses down there with uh, capsicum. Yeah, I've seen. Below the greenhouses, I have uh, strawberries. What made you decide to move it from the kitchen garden and make this whole farm? I would say uh, the greenhouse is a youth enterprise fund sponsored by the government. Okay. So just an advert on the newspaper. Mm -hmm decided to try it out okay. because they had uh, provided that they are supporting with everything. Mm -hmm. All you required was to uh, fund a certain percent and okay. then they'll give you and support you for the entire growth. So what, what did you start with? I would say I started with spinach, okay. yeah, then skumawiki, but I started in very, very small portions because I was not sure how they are going to perform finally. Mm -hmm. I used to make like a bed, then wait and see how they perform, then I expand little by little. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you I've planted the entire everything. I've grown gorgets, I've grown cucumbers. Mm. Then after they surprise me, mm -hmm. I get rid of them and I <laughs> work with what mean? I'm comfortable with. <laughs> what do you mean when they surprise you? I planted cucumbers and they were all wiped out. Mm. After maybe about four or five harvests, mm. the leaves all turned white. So I got rid of them completely. Mm -hmm. And I started growing things that I'm a little comfortable with. This is called manure tea. Manure tea? You see the same way you use a sieve and put tea leaves and then you put water? Uh -huh. This is the same concept. Because what you realize is, as much as you use manure when you're planting, plants do not uh, feed on manure solid. Uh -huh. Plants feed uh, the extracts of manure yes. in liquid form the ones you water. Yes. So instead of allowing all that process to happen, uh -huh. you get a sieve, you uh -huh. put manure, uh -huh. and then you put water, uh -huh. you allow it to stay for about three days, uh -huh. and then you scoop it out and you can feed into the plants. So for how long have you harvested this? Roughly two and a half months. Okay. Yeah, we've been harvesting and letting them move to the market. Uh -huh. Yes. What do you want to Ah, If I were to take this to the market, I would make nothing. Because, uh, really? yeah, <laughs> a bunch of uh, skumawiki mm -hmm. that uh, family consumes is roughly about maybe 20 shillings or something. Mm -hmm. So I let women from the market to come and collect and mm -hmm. they go and sell at the at correspondence market. Yes. Oh, yep. right. okay. So yeah. you sell them at 20 shillings or they sell them at 20 shillings? No, for me it's a bottle. There's a measure we use okay. and then we sell a 20-20 bottle. Uh -huh. 
then they take as much as they need to go and uh, sell in the market. Okay, then they yes. do their own split. And yes, yeah. yes, yes. And what do you have here? Uh, these are gadgets. Mm -hmm. yeah, after I got scared the previous time because mm -hmm. of the powder mildew disease, mm -hmm. uh, there is a new variety. Okay. Yes. So we introduced it here. Uh -huh. We'll see how it comes up. So That's why it's a small portion, just to try it again. At least also so you can be safe. Yes. Yeah, with it. Yes. All right. Now let's go uh, just for this part mm -hmm. of the farm. Let's yes. do some quick math. You know, mm -hmm. seeds of gold is all about the figures. Yes. Now, um, this portion of land, mm -hmm. how much on average would you estimate you spend in a month mm -hmm. on it? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in terms of labor, mm -hmm. uh, pest control, mm -hmm. you know, chemicals and everything. And how much would you say you get from it? Well, in terms of sales, I can say, as you see these portions, mm -hmm. they're almost split with specific clients. Mm -hmm. So okay. you, you can do mud one, two, three, four, five. That's ah. uh, five women who literally own the sukuma I have. So before you, you, you decided to you know, plant, plant the sukumas, mm -hmm. did you meet them first and then know that these are the people I'm going to be taking to? Surprisingly, let me tell you, uh -huh. the moment you have a ready product, uh -huh. it finds clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even I can say I don't satisfy all of them. Mm -hmm. Because like the five mamas who own this portion, uh -huh. uh, the few that are left, it's mm -hmm. almost like us come first. So, yes, yes. Uh, you've spent like how much and how much do you expect? I would say uh, if we give water maybe about 5,000 a month, mm -hmm. then uh, labor for two guys 20,000. Mm -hmm. So if you multiply, that's like 25,000 a month. But you see uh, the five mamas are giving on a weekly basis 20,000. <clears> so what your farm would spend in a month is what you get back in a week. Don't tell anyone. It's no. too late. We've already told people. People now know. <laughs> ah, <Yes>. Interesting. <laughs> hey, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And you've mentioned cabbages. Yes, I have cabbages. Let us go and see the cabbages. Oh, that way. To where the Okay. So, uh, for the cabbages, I in a kujiwa kwa gate, unapeleka kwa soko, ama Pia Mama Tony from Kawangwari and Oni section. Hapo kutoka hapo unampimia hivi. Ah, pana, pana. Uh -huh. Cabbages, we also sell from here, uh -huh. but no one can own a portion of cabbage uh -huh. because once you harvest cabbage, it's done. Ah. It's a one time harvest. Uh -huh. So these ones are waiting the next maybe a month and a half. Uh -huh. We also will harvest all of them together. And how long does it also take? Approximately four months? All, entirely, almost anything that you plant will take four months. Uh -huh. So. Four months and you bought the seeds for like what? Mm, uh, say 800 bob. For all, all of them? That's, yes. So this is just this portion? They still? Yeah, we still have uh, the lower portion of the farm. That has the greenhouses? I have uh, the two greenhouses uh -huh. and strawberries. One and a half acres of vegetables. Cabbages, spinach, kale, skumawiki. We have carrots, potatoes. This gentleman has a super green thumb. This day is all about vegetables. Keep it simple. Vegetables require different conditions and levels of attention. This means knowing the type of organic or nutritional supplements that will fortify the soil and help increase your yield. Professor, Yes, this is uh, Peter Kanye. And uh, this is uh, Professor Ogueno from Egerton University, okay. Department of Horticulture. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, Professor, you've taken some time, you've gone through the farm, umiona vitu hapa na pale. What are some of the observations that you'd say you've made? Ya kwanza, vile wanafanya kuvuna, wana harvest. Mm -hmm. When I harvest very severely. Uh, uh, Mr. Kanye, probably. Yes. Are you the one who's responsible for no, the harvesting? No, 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 no. I would like to call my guys uh -huh. because mostly I'm out uh, during the day when harvesting yeah, is being sure, done. Sure. Uh, Joseph, Isaac. 
Come. This is Isaac. Isaac, hello. And this is Isaac. Joseph. Hello. Yes. Joseph. Hello. Sasa Hi. how are you wanna kuapa kila wakati kuna chavunwa? Students Mwalimu. Yeah. Leo muko university. So <laughs> Isaac, inatakana mukivuna musi toe matawi kwa stem kabisa na mna hii. Hii ni mbaya. Itakana wa muki harvest muna kata muna wacha kama 2 to 3 centimeters ya stock mm -hmm. hivyo. Mm -hmm. Kwa sababu hii kewachwa hivi itakauka na yanguke enyewe. Mm -hmm. Bila kukos. Na hii ingine mm -hmm. tukikata na muna hii tunakos wound kwa stem. Mm -hmm. Na sa ingine kama hali ya hewa siyo mzuri mm -hmm. Mvua inaweza kuingia hapa mm -hmm. na ingize magonjwa mm -hmm. through the stem alafu hii itakauka. Okay. Na pia ya pili pia mkivuna mm -hmm. when sure that mkivuna muna wacha at least 3 to 4 leaves. Mm -hmm. Musi wache moja au mbili mkivacha hivyo sababu ili leaves ingine zitoke hizo mm -hmm. inde zimebaki ndiyo satengeza chakula. Yeah. Alafu hiyo chakula ndiyo itafanya ingine pia Yanzi yake kutoka na tukitoa matawi zote tuwache mti uchi aisha toa matawi zingine alafu akutakuwa na kitu cha kuvuna next time tunavuna okay. sawa sawa so. na pia nimeona iko mboga iko carrot iko cojets yeah. iko kales na cabbages so next time nitakana mu practice crop rotation mali mulipanda Cabbages, musipande skuma. Okay. Pengine mupande carrot au mupande kojet. Yeah. Alafu muna rotate na mnaio. Sababu skuma na cabbages ni, ni vegetables of the same family. Sasa kama kulikuwa na gonjwa huko ilikuwa kwa cabbages, ukipanda skuma kama ilibaki kwa mchanga, pia hiyo skuma itakuwa ya yeah, fact. So mu practice crop rotation. Nimependezwa na hali ya magonjwa naona iko management sawa. Mm. Ingawa hali vile weather iko. Yeah. Iko sometimes or powder mildew to attack like a, a spinach. Mm. Eh. Na hiyo ikitoka mnaangalia matawi. Matawi inakaa kama imewekwa powder. Inakaa white white. Okay. Yes. Na hiyo ni very serious na iko madawa kama mancoseb na the rest unaweza ku spray ku control. Na pia hali ya weather vila imekaa. Njini mge. Muna, munaona sa ingine kuna skuma inatoa kama kichwa ya maua. Yeah. Hiyo inaetua bolting. Right? Okay. Na hiyo ikitoa hiyo maua, sasa kuna tena matawi itatokea. Yeah. Imefika mwisho. Mm. Na hiyo ni kawaida kama hali ya hewa kama temperatures mm -hmm. are between minus 2 to 10 degrees centigrade. Hiyo, yes, hiyo bolting ni common. Baridi, baridi. Mm -hmm. Na kwa cabbages, hiyo mm -hmm. ikitokea, hakuna kitu utauza, sababu inatoka juu ya head. Yeah. Yeah. Na head hiyo ndiyo tunauza. Nimeona muna manyiwa tea, mm -hmm. shimo ya kutangeza hiyo, hiyo ni ya mzuri, kwa sababu lazima ukulima ya squeeze, lazima hiyo sustainable. Utumie waste kwa shamba, urudishe kwa shamba tena. Na manyiwa ni mzuri, only kwa carrot, lazima mjiadari. Meniambia mwaka hizo mwizo muki harvest munaona kama carrot moja kubwa inatu watoto watoto. Mm -hmm. Iyo tunaeta kwa lugha ya watalam, forking. Okay. Na iyo forking inaletwa kama manyua is not well decomposed. Oh, so siya tinamanisha eti carrot iko healthy sana sasa ndiyo ino, inapata twins. <laughs> <laughs> Ama inamea mugu. Yeah, iyo kumea mugu sababu ya manyiwa mm -hmm. kama is not well decomposed. Okay. Okay. So mukitua, mukitumia manyiwa kama ni manyiwa mixed au ile umetoa lazima iwe well decomposed. Okay. How will you know if the manure is ready? Good. They are at the farm level maybe there are two indicators. Mm -hmm. One, uki color it a change. Mm -hmm. Sababu manyewa uliweka matawi green, zingine ni color tofauti tofauti. Mm. Siki change color, paka zinakuwa like uh, brownish, mm -hmm. dark brownish. They leaves themselves. Yeah, is everything. Yeah. That means that manyewa is almost ready. Ah. Then you also take a heap, like if it cramps very in your finger, you mm. hold it this way. Na inafunjika very easily, in mm -hmm. small, small, small bits. Mm -hmm. Then that is an indication that your manyewa 
is ready yeah. and it is well decomposed. Okay. You need degree course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For free. Okay. I'm yeah. Yeah. All it right, Sasa. So, so, so probably you. we can let them go back. Yes. Let's go greenhouses. So. This is my greenhouse eh? Okay. That's how we've labeled it here. Ooh, it's warm in here. Yeah, the temperatures is, are controlled. We have a uh, yellow capsicum, is what we have planted here. Okay. Pili pili ho ho yarangi. So, is it, when they grow, they all grow in the green color? Yes, when they start growing uh -huh. uh, from the flower into small fruit, mm -hmm. they are all the same color, mm -hmm. which is green. Mm -hmm. But after 75 days, mm -hmm. they turn to either yellow or red, depending on the variety you have planted. But as they are right now, for example, you can see some very big ones. Yes. Are they ready to harvest? Uh, size is not the one that determines, but after uh, they are mature, I can okay. use that word. After okay. they stayed in the greenhouse for 75 okay. days after transplanting, uh -huh. that is when you can say they are ready to harvest. Now, Professor, I can see some of the systems that Bonakani uh, has used here. I'm seeing he has drip irrigation yeah. and he's planted his uh, capsicum in you know, yeah. pots from plastic bags. Right. Is, there, is, 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 is there an advantage yeah, of this system? There's a lot of advantages mm -hmm. of this system. One, drip irrigation, there's water economy. Yes. The drip only allows the amount of water that it is configured mm -hmm. to allow. Yeah. So you don't have that excessive wastage. Yes and uh, use of water mm. then secondly using these containers mm. is very good to deal with uh, soil diseases if mm. there is a soil problem mm -hmm. it will only attack this individual uh -huh. yes, yes in a container uh -huh. and one thing that is good about this you must provide for the drainage mm -hmm. the way you prepare the soil mixes mm -hmm. yeah at the bottom there are some gravel Mm. So that if there is excessive water, it Naturally. easily mm. drains. Yeah. All right. So was it expensive to set up in Changa? <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no, no. You see, same way uh, people plant on the ground, mm. same soil that was in the greenhouse, mm. I just uh, mixed uh, charcoal for mm. water retention mm. and uh, manure, mm. like food for the plants. Mm. Then, uh, as I explained, we need a uh, Pebbles, at least to make sure that it is, will not soak. Yeah. The water will not retain in the bag yeah. because the bag is uh, containing all the water that goes inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I didn't bring in any foreign soil from outside. Okay. I just used the soil that was within mm -hmm. and then filled in the pots, okay. I filled in the bags and then put my plants okay. inside. And yeah. then, Professor, I can notice some whitish, whitish things. Is this what we call the powdery mildew? Yeah, that's powdery mildew. Mm -hmm. And I can see it's been affected it's in the affected. sun. Mm. So I think Mr. Kanye might just do spraying almost immediately. Mm. Otherwise, he's going to lose uh, a lot of his crop. One thing that plays a major role in the occurrence of this disease is the, yes. the way you manage the environment within the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. So the relative humidity, yes. right, yes. Is, is, is a big issue and that could be the concern because I don't see you opening the ventilation mm -hmm. so that relative humidity is regulated. Okay. And with the higher relative humidity, there are the chances of this uh, powdery mildew or, or carrying. So there's when it's high or low? When it is high. Okay. Yeah. So you need to open the greenhouse? The greenhouse. Because legs. at night, mm -hmm. you see the water that, or during the day, the water that comes from the leaves mm -hmm. is not escaping. Yes. It is retained within the same. So sometimes you can improve ventilation mm -hmm. just by opening. Yes. The sides, yes. mm. so that the hair that accumulates escapes and mm -hmm. then fresh air comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. How old did you say these are? Uh, this now should be about 60th day. 60th day? Yes. All right, yes. so at least 15, 15 16 mm -hmm. more days. Yeah, they will have more larger fruits and okay. maybe they'll start turning and color. the other ones? I have yeah, in the lower greenhouse, mm -hmm. I planted them a little earlier, mm -hmm. but part of it so and even have started turning color oh, okay so probably yeah. we can go and see those ones we can check uh, these are already semi-mature okay. you can see they started turning color uh -huh. and on this side we have uh, 
some fresh replacement, so mm -hmm. this does come in. How many times will, would you harvest from this? Now, you see, what you can see, they almost color change, huh? yeah. say 50 to 75 percent, yeah. those are ready for harvest. Okay. Now the moment the fruit starts uh, turning color, mm. it's almost like on a daily basis you realize there's a change of color. Mm. So now you can target your market mm. because within a week, mm. even if it starts changing color on Monday by Friday, mm. still will be changing color. Okay. Meaning, you, depending on your market needs, you can have a say once or twice a week. Okay. Uh, but ordinarily I do twice harvest per week. Twice a week? Yes. So for how long? Uh, harvesting, yeah. they will go for maybe up to four, six months, Professor. Mm. Yeah. But six months is on the extreme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can harvest up to uh, two months or three, depending on your management. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but you have you have staggered your you staggered your planting, planting so yeah. that you always have. Yeah, for this half mm -hmm. is ready for harvest. Yeah. One, by the by the time this uh, reduces harvesting, uh, the other greenhouse will have started turning color. Yeah. So I'll harvest that one. Yeah. And then by then, maybe these ones will also start turning color. And by then you so I'll have a circular, yeah. yeah I'll, uh, staggered harvest. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have staggered harvesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to engage kidogo. You like maths? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Seeds of gold is all about mathematics yes. for the pockets, yes. of course. <laughs> now, how much? You know, for example, in a harvest, how many do you get? So, you know, in terms of weight or in terms of the number of, of fruits, mm -hmm. and how much do you sell them, and how much would you say it cost you? We can do slight calculations. Huh? Maybe a plant like that has about five or six red red capsicum. Huh? Mm -hmm. That could almost hit a kg. So, this will give you between 120 and 150 shillings per kg. So I harvest twice a week for two greenhouses. So when you harvest, you know, uh, that twice a week, mm -hmm. how many kgs probably might you get? Uh, let's say I may not click 500 kgs because okay. not all plants will be ready. Okay. But let's say maybe per harvest I'll have about 200, 300 kgs. For the week? For, for per harvest. Per harvest. So two harvests, mm -hmm. so that's about 600 kgs. 120 per kg, so let's call it 100 times 600 kgs a week. Yeah. So that's 60,000 mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. So, Professor, tell us well, what can you tell us about the, the yield or the management of the? Yeah. Crop. Good. I think Mr. Kanye is a good farmer, but um, if he's getting one kilogram per plant, mm -hmm. I think that is on the average. Mm -hmm. There's still potential up to three kilograms per single plant with a better management. Oh. And I think what we could be attributing that is one is the powdery mildew. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that is a, a, a concern, but mm -hmm. uh, he can get up to three. Then from his management, if you go to a number of farms, they have the problem with the blossom end rot, right? Mm -hmm. It's very common. I've walked through the greenhouse, mm -hmm. I've not seen a single one. Peak. And that's Thank an you. indication <laughs> that he's a good manager uh -huh. in terms of water management mm -hmm. and the application of, of mm -hmm. calcium. Mm -hmm. Because if there's lack of calcium mm -hmm. and irregular watering, then you, even in tomato it happens. You see tomato starting to rotting from the from the tip of the bottom, from the bottom yeah. here, from the blossom, mm. is what we refer to as the blossom okay. end rot. Yeah. Okay. And that one, I give him a credit because we are not seeing anything. Then he talked of flower flower shedding. Mm -hmm. I think that is a problem, maybe mm -hmm. due to nutrition. Mm -hmm. If because if you lose those flower, then you are losing the fruit. Okay. Yeah. But the first the first flower is necessary to minimal, not the whole thing. Losing the whole thing, it means that the plant was trying to weigh. Ah. what it can support okay so the excess that it cannot support it mm -hmm. normally sheds them mm -hmm. but they are not flowers in if you look at them there's a very small fruit at the pinhead stage yes yeah. yes it is lost because the nutrition is not uh, uh well balanced mm -hmm. yeah and also sometimes it comes about due to temperature mm -hmm. the dunal temperature mm -hmm. if the night and the day temperature mm -hmm. are not optimum mm -hmm. Then you also have that uh, premature, we call it premature flower abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. But I think Mr. Kanye is a good farmer because these problems are minimal mm. in his farm.
Mm. Mm. Okay. He has the advantage of landscape architecture. <laughs> so he grooms his <laughs> plants. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> he talks to them nicely to grow. <laughs> Saved the best for last. Ha, ah, here we are. Hey, when can you have a very, very beautiful crop? Thank you. This is very nice. Strawberry. So do you have the, you do you use the bags for the same reason that, you know, you're using the, for the capsicum? Yes, plus an additional reason. Mm. Uh, strawberry being a fruit is easily rot. Yes. So I, I raise them with the bags mm. so that the fruits can uh, hang outside the, outside the bag, okay. and now the fruits are not going to get that one and they are not going to easily rot. Uh -huh. So the harvest becomes even easier mm -hmm. and you can even be able to spot a ripe fruit from a distance. Uh -huh. I can see also you have uh, very big, big fruits. Mm -hmm. Have you already started harvesting? Uh, I brought all these in stages. Mm -hmm. I started with uh, just 100 plants, okay. then I've been splitting them little by little. Uh -huh. By the time I was about 500, I was harvesting. Uh -huh. But now I have about 1,200. From it's 100? Out of, yes. It's out of splitting. You know, these are grown from splits. Yes. So I split and filled them in all the bags, as you can see. So how long ago is that? Uh, let me say I've been doing slowly. Not like presented or planned to like expert. Okay. After I see there are too many, mm. I go in. So mm. maybe about uh, eight months or so. Professor, what can you tell us about Mr. Kanye's uh, strawberries? No, it's a good crop. Uh -huh. Only that the first fruits uh, are likely to be made dirty mm -hmm. because of the soil. Mm -hmm. So we would recommend that he uses some polythene for the initial fruit so mm -hmm. that they don't land on the media mm -hmm. which will make them dirty and start rotting. All right. But generally it's a good crop, mm -hmm. it's well managed. Now, Professor, mm -hmm. tell us, um, horticulture. Which is the best place to start from? Which is the best way to start and venture into horticulture as Mr. Kanye has? Now, horticulture, if you look at it widely, like if you start from flowers, flowers before you produce, you must get a market. Yes. Because we don't consume them by through our mouth. Yes. Consumption is different. Yeah. But for fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. the market is always there. Yeah. So you can start by producing even before before Mama no. Tony comes and yes. takes a section. But only for flowers, <laughs> it's strictly advisable that first you identify your market, yes. then you produce for that market. Mm. And like strawberry, if you go to a supermarket, you still get some from South Africa. So it means what we have is not enough. Is not enough. Yes. Right. right. There's an old saying, mm -hmm. you need a lawyer once in your life, mm -hmm. a doctor once in your life, mm -hmm. a policeman once in your life, mm -hmm. but you need a farmer three times a day. <laughs> hey, hey, true. At the beginning, sorry, at the beginning, middle and end of the day, mm. you need you breakfast, must eat. lunch and supper. You, you must, must eat. eat. You and must everything eat. comes from the farm. Right. Yeah. So thank you very much, Mr. Kanye, for welcoming us to your farm in yes. very cold and dairy. And You're welcome. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Professor, for uh, giving some words of advice to the gentleman at the farm and also to Mr. Kanye himself. Thank you. I'm sure he has uh, received a lot of knowledge from our visit today. Sure that. Oh, yes. Like. There we have it. Value in farming is because we need to eat in the morning, at lunchtime, and for dinner. And food can be a source of income other than a source of nutrition for our bodies. The food can be consumed locally or can be exported. That's the value in food production and farming. That's why we are here on Seeds of Gold. The foundation of healthy plants boils down to two main things, adequate mineral nutrition and strong soil biology. More to come after the break. Across the town is Lucy, a farmer who specializes in growing traditional greens. With the changing lifestyles and health awareness, more and more people are now consuming these types of vegetables. Ishambayote, how big is it? 
Le shamba, okay. Ile shamba, ili nimepanda mboga. Yeah. It is like uh, 2.5 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, that is two and a half. Two and a half acres. Uh -huh. And the vegetables, gani mkonazo, mostly? Ah, nafanya mboga yote ya Kenya ya Kenyeji. Tunaskuma, mm -hmm. spinach, mm -hmm. kanzira, managu, mm -hmm. tuko na uh, terere, mm -hmm. uh, mrenda, mm -hmm. uh, mito, mm -hmm. kunde, E, tunapanda onions mm -hmm. kwanza kwa wingi sana mm -hmm. vile nimesoma kama mkulima mm -hmm. nasikia kuna wadudu hawapendi harufu ya kitungu ah. so that is why we have put it there awesome. iwe inatusaidia tusitumie a lot of pesticides, in, pesticides. Uh, chemicals uh, kwa sababu najaribu okay i feed just my community mm -hmm. and i'm trying to keep them healthy Ah. Ivo si tumi madawa mengi. Nice. For how long have you been farming specifically vegetables? Vegetables are there for I've been there now for three years. Uh, prof, hizo mm. mboga, hizo uh, si mboga skuma, unazionaje? No ni sawa actually. This um mfalme F1 is a hybrid. Yeah. It's a new seed in the market. Uh -huh. And I can see it is it is performing well. Yeah. And I'm also impressed kwa managu. Mhm. Mm Klima is doing what we are calling ratooning, right? Uh -huh. And a cut off, and then it allows pressure shoots to... Because under normal circumstances, this thing, farmers want to harvest for only four to eight weeks maximum. Mm. But you can see, hers can be harvested for... Eight months. Eight months. Prof, onions repelling wadudus, fact or fiction? No, that is true. In organic farming, mm -hmm. it is now recommended that you intercrop with onions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it repels mm, okay. a number of uh, uh, insects. So the onions themselves, where how the pandas are kuuza? Ah, kuna wakati zina kwa nyingi na tunauza. Lakini kwa sasa unona nikidogo. So this time we are just multiplying them all over. What made you decide to go into vegetable farming and specifically the traditional you know, mboga ya kienyeji. Wow, it is a funny story. Uh -huh. Having operating a milk bar, mm -hmm. my mother visited my shop, found mm -hmm. that my kienyeji egg was not yellow. Those, that time I used to do kienyeji chicken. Mm -hmm. She told me, plant some vegetables so that the yolk can be yellow. Give mm -hmm. to the chickens so that the yolk can be yellow. Mm -hmm. I did a little, a small portion of skumawiki. Mm -hmm. But in 2012, mm -hmm. the rains were good mm -hmm. and my vegetable overwhelmed the chickens. Mm -hmm. I decided to sell just at the boot of my car, outside mm -hmm. my shop, mm -hmm. my milk bar. Mm -hmm. And I picked 100 pieces. Mm -hmm. Within 16 minutes, I had my 1,000. So I just 16 thought, wow. minutes? Yeah. My customers were asking me, how na spinach? How na saga? How na managu? So I, yeah, I was just registering. You started with 16 minutes, 1,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Has the time within which you make a thousand shillings <laughs> reduced? Within the same time, mm -hmm. the amount of money has has increased mm -hmm. because now actually by the time I'm packing my car, mm -hmm. my customers are already waiting for me mm -hmm. because they just know. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually what makes them happy is that uh, most of them have visited my farm mm -hmm. and they're seeing we are trying to be organic. Ah, and yes. you know nowadays everybody is taking care of his health. Yes. Kila mtu anajipenda. What's the source of your manure? Uh, as you can see I have 30 animals. Yes. So from my animals mm -hmm. I still get uh, manure from, um, I buy from outside. The mm -hmm. goat manure from uh, Kajiado, mm -hmm. Narok. Mm -hmm. Prof, kuna difference between goat manure and yeah, manure. basically the components of manure depends on what the animal was fed on. Mm -hmm. So like in Kajiado, the way they small or less they free range. Mm -hmm. So they eat different herbs mm -hmm. and different forages mm -hmm. and then that manure also will also contain nearly a diversity mm -hmm. of what it was fed on. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like zero grazing mm -hmm. where you feed on maybe one particular feed. Mm -hmm. So Silent that gives that manure yeah. a lot of diversity mm -hmm. in terms of nutrient composition. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, hapa tunataka kuka spider plant. Mm -hmm. um, having a new helper from uh, Gikuni. Mm -hmm. He has come with an idea telling us that uh, we can intercrop the skuma and the spider plant mm -hmm. so that we don't we don't put our skumas in the nursery. Mm -hmm. We just go direct. 
after 45 days, mm. when we approve our spider plant, mm. the skooma will remain. All right, now, um, she's mentioned something about the, the kills and the spider plant yeah. being planted, mm. you know, at the mm. same time to help the skoomas grow faster. Is, okay. is there any research or, you know? No, this is a very innovative way of farming. Mm -hmm. So what they are doing is intercropping, which is so long as that the crops are not of two families of the same family of the same family. So yeah. like kales is from a different family. Yeah, uh, sagets from a different family. Mm -hmm. That's an excellent way of even controlling pests. In addition, also saget has been reported to con to repel pests like the mites. Is is there a reason why you know there is so much demand for those kenyaji vegetables nowadays as yeah. compared to before? Consumers have realized that there are a lot of health benefits. Mm. associated with the indigenous vegetable. Okay. One, in terms of uh, nutritive value, mm -hmm. they are superior than cabbages and kales, like, uh, let's say, minerals like iron and mm -hmm. calcium. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the other health benefit is that currently there's a lot of interest in uh, cancer. Mm. That bitterness that you feel when you, uh, the flavor, mm -hmm. there's a lot of concern with cancer management. Mm -hmm. And also traditionally, if you look at all of them, they're also used as uh, in traditional medicine, mm. like yeah. for stomach yeah. ache and what. Yeah. So they are combining all those benefits mm. into one mm. by consuming those vegetables. Okay, so as we continue to see some more of the farm, probably Lucy, you can tell us, the information that you have on vegetable farming, did you get formal training from somewhere? I got a chance of going to Arohio Farmer's Training Center. Mm -hmm. I've gone for about three certificates. How many laborers do you have? In, this is a very big piece of land. If I would take on the side of the, of the farm, mm -hmm. of the vegetables, mm -hmm. I just have uh, two permanent mm -hmm. and every day I have uh, two casuals. How much you'd say you'd make in a day, roughly, mm -hmm. minus now the paying of the laborers? Nowadays we make like 600 mm -hmm. to 1,000 bunches every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by a bunch we sell at around 10 shillings. 10 shillings. Yeah. So 6,000 shillings per day, that's approximately with six days a week. That's, well, you can do your own math. Huh? Lucy's proximity to the market is a big advantage to her business. Just five minutes from her farm, she is able to deliver fresh produce, which has seen her develop a rich customer base. So how would you say venturing into farming has impacted your life? Ah, one thing, I feel so good, I'm so free. Uh -huh. You're your own boss. Nobody will tell, <laughs> me, will tell me that I'm late, so I feel so good. Yeah. I wake up at my own time. Mm. I, and I feel proud when I'm, you know, the way I was admiring, I admiring my boss. Mm. I feel good. <laughs> Do you sometimes offer, you know, trainings to people who would be interested? Do people come visit your farm to learn a thing? Excellent. Or two? Actually, that is the main, the main job that I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get people from. Actually, I would say all over an Afri uh, African continent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Two weeks ago, I had people from Swaziland. Nice. Yeah. Okay, mm. this is an international piece <laughs> of land. Uh, at right least here. when I'm I'm training, I still get some little money. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. so it keeps me going. Okay. Mm. And I think there's also opportunity for adding value to your vegetables after mm. harvesting. Mm -hmm. I've not if you can pack them in small packages, right? in plastics with some holes so that they keep their condition and they stay for long. Because vegetables, when they are exposed to high temperatures, they start wilting and mm -hmm. lose condition. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, maybe go for bigger markets, take them to the supermarkets. Mm -hmm. You just need to brand them that this is organically produced. Mm -hmm. So if you can brand, you will have really added value. Okay. Right, there we have it. Veggies are your friends. Keep it seeds of gold. <laughs>